to welcome you to today's presentation, Outreach Graphics Made Easy, How to Create Visuals on a Budget. This presentation is the second presentation in the social media training series hosted by the Get It Back campaign. The Get It Back campaign supports groups across the country to help eligible workers claim refundable tax credits like the Earned Income Tax Credit and the Child Tax Credit and connect them to free tax preparation as well as asset building opportunities. Partnerships are at the core of the Get It Back campaign. We provide outreach tools, resources, and trainings like this one so that you can establish and nurture relationships in your community that will expand your tax credit reach. Today's social media training will present how you can make your own images to share on social media. If you don't have a dedicated staff person to do this, or you lack a budget to invest in fancy software, no problem, you are definitely in the right place. This presentation will walk you through how to use Canva, a free online design program. You will also learn about other online tools available. Before we get started, I'd like to share a few quick housekeeping reminders. First, this webinar is being recorded, and we will send the recording along with the slides within one week. Make sure that you have entered your audio pin to be able to hear all of the content and the presenters during this training. If you have a question at any time, you can type it in the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel. We will be taking questions at the end of the training, and you can type your questions as you think of them. And if you need any additional assistance, please raise your hand. Now I will turn it over to Jenny Wong. Hello. Thank you, Roxy, and thanks again to everyone for joining us today. So as Roxy mentioned, this, this training will be focused on using Canva, but there are other tools that you can also use. Canva, Canva is just a really simple and easy to, easy to use tool, and it's free. So it's a good one to get you started. All right, so let's get into it. So before we get into the different kinds of content, we wanted to talk a little bit about why images are important. If you listened into the webinar from yesterday, then you already have heard a lot of this. But basically, when you're scrolling through a home page or news feed on, say, Twitter or Facebook, you see a lot of text, especially on Twitter. Well, when there's an image and you see the bright colors and it takes up a lot of space, that really catches people's eyes and it stands out in that sea of text. It makes it a little more fun and exciting and it also increases engagement from followers. I think, uh, I'm not sure about the statistics, so don't quote me on it, but I believe that images on Twitter get retweeted 50% um, more than just text. It's, it's a big number and it makes a difference. So. Whenever you can, it's really important to spend a little time making images instead of just posting uh, links and text. And, and it's just a fun thing for people. People really enjoy them. So, all right. So these are a few kinds of content ideas that you can create images for. So let's just go through them quickly. And after we read through the list, um, we'll have several examples for you to look at. So weekly or monthly VITA statistics are a great way to make a quick, quick graphic. It can be really simple, just a plain background in one color and then big text that says, this week we served 250 VITA clients. It puts um, your work into perspective for uh, your followers and it gives them a concrete idea of what you're doing behind the scenes. You can also share stories from people who have benefited from the credits. So uh, a good way to do this would be to have one staff member go to your VITA site and then find a couple people to interview. 
you can make a really quick graphic. It could just be a picture of the client on the left and then a quick quote from them on the right uh, telling their story and talking about how they've been helped. You can also thank your volunteers either by thanking all of them at once. Uh, thank you to our 42 amazing VITA volunteers. Or you can uh, recognize individuals. So uh, someone who's really been very dedicated in their work. You can also create images for calls to action. Say you're fundraising and you want your, uh, your call to be a little more prominent in someone's newsfeed. Well, make an image. Um, statistics and facts are great for graphics because without that graphic element, it's, it can be hard to digest those big numbers and those big facts. So putting a picture, uh, maybe a chart or a graph to the facts or statistic can be a great way to do that. And if you've ever been on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram ever, you'll see that quotes are everywhere. People love to share them. They're they can be inspirational, so always make sure you know how to make quotes. Um, breaking news can be shared through images, event invitations, and then holidays and important dates can also be recognized through images on Facebook. Finally, we have memes and trending topics. So not all of the content that you share on social media has to be very serious. Sometimes you can uh, tie your organization's work to something that's happening in the media and the news or something that's just funny. And, and we'll show you an example of how you do that. So here's an example. Again, we used this yesterday. It's from results underscore tweet. And it is a volunteer thank you. It says, thanks to our amazing volunteers, your tireless advocacy help save key provisions of hashtag working family credits. You did it. Congress made permanent, made permanent critical provisions of pro-work tax credits that left millions of Americans out of poverty every year. So easy and simple, but it's a great way to just get people excited about the work that you're doing and to just say thank you. Um, facts and statistics. So we have here an image from the World Wildlife Fund. It says, at birth, a blue whale calf is the largest baby on Earth. Well, if you were just reading that, that simple statement, that simple fact, I don't know that you'd really be able to envision it the way you can here since they've added this gorgeous picture of a whale. Um, not all of the images that you create have to be very busy and filled with information. Sometimes you can just have a beautiful picture and a simple heading, and that's enough. Um, if this is the kind of image you're interested in creating, I highly recommend going to at WWF and checking out the pictures they have featured. They have some gorgeous imagery, and you can uh, you can get inspired and sort of sort of use their um, images as a template for your own social media graphics. And that's always a good idea before you start to get inspired by other uh, social media accounts. Uh, again, showed this one yesterday. It's from Oxfam International. And it is based on the statistics that, statistic that 62 uh, of the richest people in the world have as much wealth as half the world. Again. Just hearing the text, you can't really digest that quickly, but that image really makes it easy to read for people. And it makes it more striking, almost. So those 62 people on the left, they have as much money as 3.5 billion people. That's an insane number, and that's why this image works. So they don't have a chart, but you can also, um, you can also show this information in a chart or a graph. Oh, and again, before I continue, um, Oxfam has wonderful illustrations of statistics. So if that's something you're interested in, check out their uh, Twitter feed. OK, so Ask Me. They, they, have, they do a really great job of taking um, 
taking issues that are relevant today and then putting them into trending topics or into memes. So if you want to make your social media a little bit funnier, um, check out their Facebook page. They have some funny stuff. But this is based on the, the rent is too damn high meme. And it says the cost of prescription drugs is too damn high. Um, another reason to use memes is just because people like to see them and they're very shareable. Um, you can see that this page has 45 shares on this picture, but just putting it in this easy to digest form, format for people, it's something, it's just something that people want to be sharing on their Facebook and their Twitter. So again, making it fun, making it relevant. And then of course, everyone has seen the quotes on social media. Um, I, I just found this one really quickly. It's from the National Women's Law Center. They have a lot of different kind of images. They have lots of quotes. They put um, in images lots of breaking news, that kind of thing. So they're a good example. I think their Facebook especially is good. So this quote is from Joe Biden. It, the headline with it says, Uncle Joe Biden always tells it like it is. And he hit the nail on the head with it, this comment. Early child care is good for parents, children, and the economy. So their images are actually very simple, but they get tons of likes and shares. So you don't have to invest a ton of time making these look like you know they came from a magazine. It can be a simple image that you share. Um, and again, uh, HRC, they, they are, um, I think what they're best at is putting images to breaking news. So on the left, you have um, a congratulations to Montana for, pass, uh, for passing an executive order. And then on the right, um, it's a highlight from President Obama's final State of the Union address. So they're both breaking news items, and then they just put a quick image to them. And um, HRC, they, they are always putting, they put out images immediately with this kind of news item. So a good example to look at if you want to see how other people are doing it. And finally, uh, celebrating holidays and, and important dates is another wonderful way to just celebrate people, celebrate events, and make it fun. So just another quick example. So today we'll be talking through how you use Canva, but there are other free graphic design programs out there. There's PicMonkey, BeFunky, and then if you want to make infographics, Canva has infographic outlines as well, but PictoChart is made for infographics, so you can get a little more involved with those. Um, these programs are all super easy to use, um, so if Canva doesn't really suit your taste, be sure to check the other ones out. We wanted to focus on one program and really share how to use the one, but the other ones are good too. Um, so I personally use Illustrator usually for my graphics because I find if there's something a little more specific that you want to do, Illustrator can do it. And Illustrator has a really powerful chart building function. Uh, so again, for the statistics and facts, that can be great. Um, this, this training is focusing on Canva, but if any of you are interested in learning more about how Illustrator works, please send us an email and let us know so that we can create that tutorial for you as well. And just anything, if you have questions or anything you want to learn more about, send us an email, let us know, and we can create it for you. Okay. Um, another point I want to hit on is free stock images. Um, I believe this was also a question someone asked, but as you probably know, stock images can get expensive. Um, there are a lot of free sites out there, plenty more than this, just Google free stock images, but these are a few of the popular ones. Um, they tend to have different rules about how you can use their images. For example, some of them, you can use their images, but you need to cite them or just say where you got them from. Some sites, you don't have to do that at all. So make sure you read through uh, what the rules are, but all of these are great free options. Um, another option that can be good, if you have a little more money to spend, what you can do is you can subscribe 
to a document site, say Shutterstock or iStock, whatever you want, and then you can purchase a one of the month-to-month -month subscriptions. Um, it, it's a little expensive for the for the month that you buy it for, maybe anywhere from two hundred to several hundred dollars, but in that one month, you can download a lot of images and then just have a stockpile of images to use throughout the year. So if you have a little more money and you really you know that you want to be using a lot of images on your website or in your social media, that can also be a good option. Okay. So now we're going to go into Canva and start working. Okay, so Canva is a great program because it's a web-based program. So how it works is you just have to sign up, give them maybe your name and email, and then um, create in your login information, and then you never even have to download a program. It's online. It's always online. And then once you make images, they're all saved there on your homepage for you. So you can log into Canva from wherever you are as long as you have internet access and work on your graphics. Um, okay. So it's a great tool for that. Okay. So let's see. Oh, I also wanted to make a quick note before we start working on these. Um, these are images that I thought would be useful for outreach campaigns, but if you're looking uh, to do images that are a little different from what you see here, a great idea is just to look online and look at other Twitter and Facebook feeds that you're really inspired by. What I like to do is whenever I come across an image that I think is really funny or just really attractive, I go ahead, I download it, and then I print it out, and I just paste it on my wall. I have a bulletin board full of different um, images that I've found on Facebook and Twitter. This can be really inspiring. If you're not sure what you want to create, you can, um, you can use that. And um, another thing, once you have a few different kinds of layouts, you don't have to keep on going. You can have a few different layouts, maybe one for quotes, one for statistics, um, one for special events, and you can just keep on using those same layouts over and over again as templates um, once you have them saved in Canva. You can also use their templates as well, whatever works for you. So we're going to work on creating these four images here. So I'm going to open them up. Okay. All right. So, before we start working on those, I wanted to show you how Canva's layout works. So, this is Canva's home page. When you're, whenever you're on the home page, you'll see your images here on the bottom, and you can always work on these projects whenever you want. If you're new to design and you want a little more help, Canva actually has this button right here that says Learn to Design. It's full of different quick tutorials um, in case there's something that I don't mention in this training today. And then once you're starting, you can create a design using one of their um, dimensions listed up here. And if you click on this More button, you'll see they have tons of different um, projects to get you started. So the social media posts are up here at the top. It's a good idea to use the um, dimension that they already have listed for each kind of post. The reason is, if you don't, sometimes a part of your image will get cropped. This isn't as much a problem as Facebook. Facebook is more flexible about what sizes you're allowed to use. But for Twitter, if, if as you can see, the Twitter dimensions are two to one. If you um, make it much taller than this, your image will definitely get cropped. So it's a good idea to follow that. And then, as you can see, they have different documents. You can create infographics and then um, titles for blogs. Pretty much anything you could uh, you would want to create is an option here. And then if none of these do your fancy, you can also go up to the top here where it says use custom dimensions and then um, do whatever dimension you feel like using. OK. 
right, so we're going to start on, we're going to start on this one. So this is one of the layouts that Canva actually has prepared for you. So this is going to be really quick and easy. I'm just going to go through how to use it. If for some reason, if I'm going too fast, please um, just say so in the chat box and I'll slow it down a little. Or if anything's unclear, let me know. Okay. So this is the this is the screen that you're going to see when you log in and you start designing your post on Canva. On the left, you have a navigation bar that has lots of different options. So I'm going to go here. If you see this little button here, it says copy this page. Well, you just click on it and then you have another version. I'm going to select the whole thing and just go ahead and delete it since we're creating it from scratch. So this is going to be a layout in Canva, so just scroll down a little bit until you find it. And as you can probably see, they have tons of great layouts that you can use, and most of them are free. So Canva has free and um, paid options. All of the free ones are, of course, free. The paid options are only a dollar, which is way cheaper than anything you'll usually find. And even the ones that aren't free, for example, this layout is not free, but what you actually have to pay for is the image in the background. So, for example, if you click on this and then you just replace this <clears throat> image in the background with your own image, this would also be free. You just can't use their stock imagery. Okay. So let's go back to this one. So the first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and click on this text. All you have to do is click, highlight it, and then you can start editing. So we're going to replace this text with Obama's quote. So this is what the uh, image is going to end up as, just to give you an idea. And so Obama said, let's work together to strengthen in the credit, reward, work, and help more Americans get ahead. Okay. So that's obviously too large. So let's change it to a smaller font first. Great. That fits. Um, one trick I like to use is to put certain text in a different color so that it stands out. Well, I want to highlight the fact that we're strengthening the credit here. That's what Obama wants to do. So the text is in white. If you click on this little box, you can change it to a different color. I'm going to change it to this orange color. And you see now it's orange. Um, this background color, it's a nice green, but I want to use the official Get It Back campaign green. So we're going to change it quickly there. And there you have it. It's almost done. So Albert Einstein did not say this quote. It was from President Obama. He said it at the 2014 State of the Union Address. And then you could, you could change the size of this one a little bit, but I like it. And if you, if you look here, you'll see they have tons of different fonts. Uh, choices for you to choose. You can change the size of the font here. And then if you click this down arrow here where it says more, you have plenty of other options from uppercase, bold, italic. You can change the alignment here, left, center, and right. And even the text spacing and transparency. So text spacing, this is how much space is in between the letters. So it can be more space or less space. We're going to put it back at Zero. Kind of fun. Um, and then you have the line height. So this is how much space is in between each line of text. Okay, well, this looks pretty good to me. So there you have it. Really quick and simple to make a quick quote. And they have other layouts here for quotes. 
Um, this is the kind of popular style. This is also kind of popular. Whatever uh, strikes your fancy. So another popular way to have quotes is through a picture. So that's the second image we're going to create today. We're going to create this image. It's the same quote, but a picture of Obama. You've probably seen um, images like this floating on your Facebook. And it's super, super easy to make. So again, if you want to just create, if you want to just copy the image you already have, just click this button right here. It says copy this page. Okay. It made another version, and we're going to scroll down to this. Again, I'm just going to delete everything so that we start from scratch. So this is again another layout option in their. Um, left hand bar. So we're going to scroll down until we see something we like. Okay. So I thought this layout looked really nice and I see a lot of layouts that look like this on Facebook. So again we're just going to quickly type in the text. Okay, this doesn't really take up enough space, so let's make the text a little bit bigger. And I don't love this font that they have here, so let's change it to something else. Okay. I also like when it's um, aligned to the right. I think that just looks nice. It's already starting to come together, and then Again, change it to President Obama. And then just click on the text again to change it. He said this at the 2014 State of the Union address. Now, this isn't our official color, so I'm going to change it to white. I don't want to use this blue color. And again, just move it. You can align it any way you want to. OK. Um, so I think a lot of the time it's a good idea to uh, use your logo in your Facebook post. So that's what we're going to do. So. I already have it uploaded in here, but basically if you want to upload something from your computer, you just click on Uploads right on the left, and then you can click on this button, Upload Your Own Images. You can also upload an images from Facebook, that's up to you. We already have it uploaded, so I'm just going to find it here, and it's this one. And then we're just going to stick it in right there. Okay. so. Let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see this properly. If you can see here, there is no white background behind my logo. This is because my logo is saved as a PNG file. If you have a logo and it's saved as a JPEG format, you may find that you have a background because JPEGs don't do transparencies. If you want this effect where there's nothing in the background of your logo, make sure you save it as a PNG. And then you can grab the corner right here and scale the image to whatever size. It automatically scales in proportion, as you see here. Uh, if you don't like the proportion it originally came in, you can click. And when you click on it, you press on Shift, and then you can get really wonky proportions. We don't want to do that. So we're just going to save it like that. Um, you may notice you have an undo and a redo button up at the top. You can press on these buttons, or you can press Control z or Control shift z to undo and redo. OK. And then um, another good thing about Canva, if you notice up here, it says Unsaved Changes.
Canva automatically saves your changes as you go along, so you don't have to worry about that. And then if you exit the, um, the tab without, with, before it's saved, it'll give you a little notice before you do that. So again, you don't have to worry about it. And we just want to replace this background with our own image of Obama. I found this image of Obama on Shutterstock. So I just found it over there, and we're just going to stick it right in there. You just drag and you drop. Very simple. And here we have it, a nice image with a quote. This is the kind of image, both this one and the last one, that you can share on EITC Awareness Day coming up in a week. So that's one thing these images are good for. OK. Let's see. So if you looked on our Facebook page this morning, you may have noticed this graphic. Well, I created this in Canva, and I'm going to show you how to make it. Um, it's a good idea to make images when you're promoting events, just because it brings a little more attention to it on your social media page. So again, you want to click right here if you want an, another version of it. And then I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit. Zoom in buttons right on the left here. OK. So just going to select everything, delete everything, because for this one, instead of using a layout, we're going to start from scratch. OK. So Canva has a lot of elements of graphics already in their system. And a lot of them are free. So we've already looked through the layouts here, and you can see they have tons of free options. Well, they also have elements. So you can see if you want to make a graphic for holidays, they have many different fun options here. And then they have, um, they have grids. If, if you want to make a photo collage, the grids are good. If you want to frame something, pretend it's um, like a disposable camera image or something, those frames are good. Um, you can also, oh, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you can also look through the illustrations, lines, shapes, icons, photos, and charts. Uh, so for this one, I'm going to search for vintage labels because that's what I want today. They have really fun ones. Hmm. OK. So this is one I saw earlier. I thought it was so fun, so we're going to use that one. Oh, and you know what? We should actually go in and add a background. So go to the background button on the left, click background, and then you can either choose a color or you can choose one of these patterns or textures. So this is the background that we want to choose. So this greenish color blends in from the, with the background. See this element right here? Well, a lot of their elements are vectors, so you can, um, you can actually change the color that they are. So instead of this greenish color, we're going to go for this orange color. You, when you're choosing colors on Canva, you can either choose the pre-selected colors they have up at the top, or you can scroll down and click to this uh, little plus sign. When you click on the plus sign, you can choose any color on the spectrum. Now, it may be a little tricky to find a specific color in the spectrum. So if you already have a color you like and you know what it is, what the, what the color code is, um, you can enter it here. This, they, they do their colors in hex codes. So if you know the RGB or the CMYK code, you can Google CMYK to hex or RGB to hex and find it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can just pick any of the colors here, and that is totally fine. So I don't really like the way they have their text, so I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to actually take this image. You just click on it to select the image. And then you can drag it to scale it. So I want it about this size. So another neat trick with Canva is when you, you're moving your image, 
you can notice when you hit a certain point in the middle, do you see? I hope I don't know if you can see it because it's light, but there's a faint purple line that goes through the middle of the page. That means that it's being aligned in the center. So you never have to worry about aligning your object. They're gonna snap into the center if you get it there. Okay. So now let's add those squiggly lines. So those squiggly lines that I found are called line with bubbled ends. Lots of different options. You can pick what you like. So here it is. We're going to drag it until it meets the middle of the page. Right. Right there. See how it snapped in place? So I want it to be a little longer this way. So I'm grabbing it. I'm going to snap it in the middle again. And you can, if you want the same element copied, you can press copy here, or you can click Alt and then click on it. And then it'll do the same thing. Okay? So if you shift click, you can click on more than one thing at a time. So I want this element to actually be white. So we're going to do that to both of them. And you can see this, this element is supposed to be behind this sign. So we're just going to click on back. All right, it's starting to come together. If you click on text here, you also have many, many text options. So we'll just add a little bit of body text. So let's say join us for, and let's change the font. And then let's make it a little bigger so that it's more readable. Great. So just drag until you get it to where you want it. Add a little heading here too. Okay. Outreach graphics. Again, pick the font that you like. I like this one and size it to how you want it. Okay. Oh no, that's okay. Um, okay, and then we want another one of these. Just do control Z if you made a mistake like I did. Okay. And so let's just change this text to say made, oops, made easy. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, if you scroll down in the text, you'll actually see a bunch of different ways that you can display text that are kind of fun. Um, I saw one I liked earlier, this one. And so I'm just going to drag it in place right there. Okay. Uh, you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move it. So because this is an event, Let's give it a date and a time. It's a little too small, make it a little bigger. And then the location is on your computer. Perfect. And then all you have to do is add in your logo. And there you have it. So we made this graphic for our event today, but if you are promoting an EITC Awareness Day or something, or any other event you may 
be doing, this can be a great way to promote that as well. So once you're done creating your event, you can go up here where it says download, and you can download it as a JPEG or a PNG or as a PDF. So I think it's a good idea to download it as a PNG because it uploads a little better onto Facebook, but that is entirely up to you. Okay, and then we're going to quickly look at how you can make this happy birthday post. So um, the earned income tax credit is turning 41, so this can be just a fun way to celebrate <coughs> Celebrate earned income tax, or celebrate EITC Awareness Day, rather than making another post. It's a little more boring. Again, this one is really easy. We're just going to add the text, add the headline, and we're just going to say, Happy Birthday Earned Income Tax Credit. Select all, change the font to something that you like. And I like that size, so let me keep it. And then you want to snap it onto the grid. Um, you can look through the images. So I think it would be really fun to put in a picture of a cake. So. I'm just going to see what their options are. And I want to find something with a transparent background. Hmm. Oh. This is the one I found that I really like. <clears throat> so you do have to pay for some of the images, but they're only a dollar, so if you do have the budget for them, it can be a really easy way to just find quick images, and that way you don't have to search for them online, which can be really nice. We're almost done here. So I was able to find some fun birthday candles <coughs> in, their, in their photos earlier. So the EITC is turning 41, so those are the candles. You can select both of them by shift clicking and then make them smaller. And we want to make it a little more fun, so if you see here, you can actually rotate the picture a little. So we're just going to make it a little bit more exciting by rotating those candles. And then those are a little too high up, so we're going to move the whole thing down. Great. I think those are still a little bit too big. Okay, so if I were putting this on Facebook, I would add a quick logo, but you know how to do that, so we don't have to go through that again. Um, again, when you're done, you can either download it or you can share it right here. So if you click on the share button, you can share it straight to Facebook or Twitter, so you don't even have to upload it separately, or you can email it to someone else to have them either edit it or share it what have you. So that's what the completed image would look like. So I hope this was able, I hope I was able to help you um, think of how you could create some of these images yourself. Um, if you look through that layout, the layouts, they have plenty of other options. Um, I wanted to quickly show you the infographics they have. I think these are really fun. Um, Another idea I had for the earned uh, EITC Awareness Day was you could create a infographic maybe that says uh, five easy ways that you can spread the word about the earned income tax credit. And this could be uh, something you can print out for your clients or just different staff members and volunteers. So 
if you look through the left here, they have plenty of different layouts. And all of these are customizable. So I'm trying to scroll in, but it's loading slowly. OK, so as you can see, anywhere you click, you can just edit. So we're not talking about the art of city structure. We're talking about outreach graphics. Great. Just go in, edit any of the pictures, edit any of the text, and then you have your own beautifully made infographic. All right. So those are all the images uh, we wanted to show you how to make today. If you have any questions, please let me know. And um, we also have our website, blog, uh, Facebook, and email if you want to stay connected with us. Uh, we just started our Facebook page recently. And that'll be a great place to check back for new uh, social media graphics. We'll be creating a lot of these kinds of images, and you can take them and either get inspired by them and make your own, or use them directly and just share them on your social media account. Um, if there's anything you want to see on our Facebook page, please let me know. And great. So are there any questions? If you have any questions, just type them into the question box. Thank you, Jenny. We do have a few questions. So the first question is if this presentation will be available for download. Yes, it will be. We also have a question about Facebook. And how do you post a PDF on Facebook? Uh, OK, so you actually can't post a PDF directly to Facebook. You have to post it as a image, so a JPEG, a PNG, um, or a video. You can also post videos. Um, so it, depending on what the PDF is, like if is the PDF an image? Because if it is, you'll just have to convert it to an image and upload it that way. Um, if you have Acrobat Pro, you can export your file as an image. If you don't have Acrobat Pro, what you can do is just Google um, convert PDF to image, and there are tons of websites out there that'll do it for you. And you just have to upload your image, and it'll um, then it'll it'll let you download it as a PDF, as an image instead of a PDF. Okay. So as you're typing questions, if you have questions about using Canva or about creating graphics at all, please also uh, let us know if you have questions or if you are interested and learning more about using Illustrator. We have another question. If you're using Canva, about how much time would you recommend spending like per week designing images? Um, I, don't, I, I don't know that I can give you a recommendation on time just because it really depends on how quickly you can make these images. So we just spent about 30 minutes and we made four. So it doesn't have to take you a long time, especially if you, um, if you use the templates that they have there already. So um, yeah, it, it just really depends. So if you, if you have more staff capacity and you have the time to tailor their layouts to what you want and something that's more personalized to your organization, I definitely recommend spending you know, a few hours, uh, up to a few hours a week doing this. I think it could make a real difference with your social media account. That being said, you know, if you don't have that kind of staff capacity, you can feel free to use the images that we produce or use the ready-made templates. And that would only take maybe an hour a week, not even, depending on what it is. So uh, really depends on what your staff capacity is, I'd say. Do you have additional uh, suggestions of organizations to look for 
uh, to look at for image inspiration? Hmm. So I shared most of my favorite Facebook pages in the um, in the PowerPoint presentation, but there are definitely other Twitter and Facebook Facebook that you can look at. Um, so some of my favorites that we did see in the presentation were World Wildlife Fund, Oxfam International, um, Ask Me does a great job, National Women's Law Center, Planned Parenthood, uh, HRC, and you can also look at um, you can also look at businesses. Sometimes Oreo will put sometimes Oreo Oreo will create really fun graphics and just other um, other big businesses. They have of course tons of staff capacity to work on these things, and you don't have to make them you don't have to make them quite as nice as they do, but you can definitely get inspired from companies like that. Okay, so we have another question about the PowerPoint. We will be sharing the recording along with the slides, so you will be able to access all of the links that are included in the presentation. Are there any other questions? We really encourage you to uh, follow our blog and also our Facebook page. And also, as you are using Canva and creating your own images, uh, be sure to share with us. We want to see what you're creating as well. So if there aren't any other questions, we want to thank you again for joining. And if you have questions,